In this lesson, we're going to be talking about who is healthy, where, and why. But in order to really understand this, we first need to take at the, a look at the intersection of resources and action. Because this has a lot to do with the why the world is the way that it is. So here we've got action on the right, resources on the left, and good health is what happens when these two things meet. So good health is here in the middle. And what do we mean by this? What is sort of, what does this mean? This is crazy, right? Well, first of all, resources often start with money or some sort of economic resource. It also starts with people, very, very important. And those people need to have information. So if you have these three things, you're definitely in a much better situation and you're much more able to create good health. But if you have all these resources and you don't do anything with them, so there are no verbs in your life, you're not, you're not creating things or making things happen, well, you can have everything in the world and just be sick. You know? So this action side is also really important. And for our purposes, I'm going to divide it up into two things. You've got society on one side, and you've got people on the other. So on a society level, you need to be able to take these resources and create systems that use them efficiently. So you need to draw the connections and find ways for things, for, to, to, for resources to flow together and to work to create that good health that you want. You also need an education system that's ready to teach people how to be healthy. That's very important. That's not always necessarily something that people innately know how to do. And then you finally have infrastructure, which is definitely sort of a little bit more of the harder decision and it can also be the more expensive one. Um, infrastructure often meaning clinics or hospitals, but it could also mean sort of like a media system that is able to transmit information about um, being healthy that could maybe improve health in your society. So not necessarily always hospitals, but that's often what people think of when, when they're talking about that. And on a personal level, you've got your willingness and ability to learn and your interest in learning, which is also important. You've got your habits that you sort of establish through that learning. And then you've got, unfortunately, a certain degree of luck, which doesn't count as much on a society level. There are elements of luck, obviously, in each one of those. But you can do all the right things. You could have learned everything you need to learn. You could do all the right things. But you could get in a car wreck, or you could be born with a genetic problem that then makes it hard for you to be fully healthy. So why am I saying this? What's, what's the point of all of this? Well, first of all, these things are connected. And you're obviously, they're connected not just at this point, but they're also connected in how you create these actions here. So you need these resources for the action, and you need the action to make the resources, sort of to unlock the resources. And this sort of interaction between, inter between action and resources is often where countries have a hard time making people in their country more healthy. I wanted to pull some examples of this and sort of take a look at maybe two countries. So I took a look at the HDI, which is the Human Development Index, and it is done by the UNDP, which is the United Nations Development Program. And on their little list on the website, they've got Norway at number one. And all the way down at the bottom of the list, not the very bottom, because there are some countries that don't report to the HDI, you've got the Democratic Republic of Congo, which rates in at 187 on the list. And there are some really shocking numbers underneath these countries life expectancy, so if you're born today in Norway, you can expect to live to 80, 81 actually, I think is what it said on the, um, on the website. So let me, t let me change that to 81. And in Congo, it was 48. So in Norway, you're going to live, just by virtue of being a Norwegian, 33 years longer on average. 
and that's not because Norwegians are necessarily like better built or something like that. That's uh, that's that's just stupid. The reason is because of resources and the ability to create action out of those resources. So let's take a look at what I would be talking about. In Norway, the average income is 48,000 per person per year. So that means each person in the society is sort of earning an equivalent of that much money if you average it out over every living person in the country. And in Congo, the budget is a lot smaller, 280 per person. Now money isn't everything. Just because Norway is making 170 times as much money per person per year doesn't necessarily mean that Congo is in the worst position they could possibly be. Although, after years and years of war, it's obviously not easy for a country like Congo to do well and do as well as Norway. But there are a lot of solutions that could bring this 48 a lot closer to this 81 over here. And a lot of it has to do with public health. And there are lots of sort of low budget ways of doing that that could bring the Congo a lot closer to Norway and other countries at the top of the list and you know, help out with making the world a more just place. I, I think that in general the prognosis for a country like Congo is actually not that bad. Um, history is definitely showing that there is a lot of progress underway right now. And that is demonstrated on this really awesome website that I put in the links for this, for this lesson. And it is called Gapminder. It's done by some very cool Swedes who love data and they love development. So if we click play on this button, on this, on this website here, and you can see, um, if you look at this map here, you can see what color sort of the different dots here represent. Click play and you can just watch as in the 1800s everyone was basically poor and sick. You can see they're not living very long. And then you can watch as the world hits the, um, the Industrial Revolution here. You can see Europe sort of start to take off. As America, you can also take a, see America taking off. And then there's a war and everybody drops for a second. And then it goes back up. And as we hit World War II, or sort of approaching that time, numbers just start to climb really quickly. And you can see here that the, sort of the richer countries of the world pretty much hit 80 by the by the late 80s, early 90s. And here you can see that there are a couple countries that are lagging sort of a little bit behind. But this isn't necessarily mean that these countries are doing anything terribly wrong. In many cases, they just don't have a lot of resources. And they've been very unfortunate in being hit very disproportionately hard by HIV and malaria and several other diseases that are really sort of holding life expectancy down. You also see that incomes are not so great in these countries as well. So, what do you do about this? Well, these are the questions that are driving this course and that are going to sort of drive the, do the global discussion around this topic for the next 30 to 50 years. So, the solutions are really going to be the things that are going to change the world. So, I encourage you guys to come play around on this website and think about solutions that might be able to drive these little blue dots and these little red dots and these little green dots here a little higher, closer to that 80. Thank you.